Hello everyone, my name is Tony. Today I will report a paper. It is about chemical analysis methods, assessment and improvement of the sea ice processing for dissolved in organic carbon analysis. Introduction. When sea ice grow, most of the brine is exposed to the under ice seawater due to the gravity drain, while a small portion stays trapped in the ice. And not only brine, but also the gaseous carbon dioxide stay trapped in the ice. And compared to brine, the impact of gaseous carbon dioxide of, uh, on the DIC analysis is greater. The ice atmospheric carbon dioxide flux is limited by the DIC stuck in sea ice. Improved measurement of DIC in sea ice are needed to better understand the air, ice, carbon dioxide flux. And in addition to the impact of gaseous carbon dioxide, there are two preliminary factors related to DIC measurement. One is the biological activity, and the other is I IKI-8. The biological activity is a common <coughs> concern in DIC measurement and in melt ice water, which could convert organic carbon into DIC. Therefore, the concentration of DIC will increase. And the IK, it is ubiquitous in sea ice and affect DIC analysis. During the process of melting ice, these crystals will dissolve and change the measurement of DIC. The most common Practice involves gas tie bags after the sample is sealed in a bag. And the air in bag is removed <coughs> by using a hand pump or a syringe through a valve from feet on the bag. But, however, the method is always time consuming and inconvenient. In a study, they simplify the mock <coughs> method for DIC analysis and test the impact of the biological activity. IK crystal and gaseous carbon dioxide on DIC measurement. Method. Uh, before we do the uh, doing before doing the experiment, we need ice sample. And the ice sample used in the study were collected at the Sea Ice Environmental Research Facility, SEIF, at the University of Manitoba. And the pool contains artificial seawater and entire pool was mixed by an array of some pumps in order to allow the seawater carbonate system to reach the balance with the atmosphere. And after we get the ice sample, there are two methods were used to process the sea ice sample for DIC analysis. One, uh, the method one is the conventional method, and method two is the modified method. The conventional method is Place the ice core in a gas tight, specially lim limited plastic bag. The bag was sealed by an imposed sealer, and the air in the bag was evacuated gently using a syringe. They pierced through a valve fountain on one side of the bag, and it caught, just, it caught several minutes. And the modified me method place the ice core in a commercially available plastic bag and then seal it by a vacuum sealer and just like this and it caught a few seconds and in order to test whether DIC would be lost during the application of the vacuum the, they pushed the testing condition to an extreme the temperature of the ice sample was brought as close as to the seawater freezing point when CS has a maximum permeability after the ice sample reached the desired value, which was trapped by a transfer digital thermometer, those ice core and then were cut into two halves, and one half used the conventional method, and the other half used the modified method. <coughs> After all the sample were sealed in cold room, they were melted at room temperature in the dark and lost water samples were measured directly after transfer to gas-type valves. 
And after all that, it's Jun Men Zhang. Uh, no, 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 I have. No, no, no. no. <laughs> and, and this is a second, this is an, another experiment to test the modified method. <coughs> Two freshly collected sea ice core, both of them were curled into two halves, and one core was still in pre poison bag, which has 0.1% HGCO2 solution, and the other ice core was still without adding it, and they all used the modified method. And then time series measurement was performed on 21 days. After all the experiments were done, there are four <coughs> data which we need to measure. The measurement of DIC. DIC was measured by an application with H3, PO4, and detect the release carbon dioxide with a carbon dioxide detector. And the measurement of DOC was measured, uh, the, co the concentration of DOC was measured with a uh, machine, machine. And the total alkalinity was measured by the grand titration method. 12 meter, milliliter of the sample was titrated with 0 0.05 more H0. And, and the less, the measurement of PCO2 was calculated from DIC and TA using CO2 as well as software. It's a computer software. Assessment and discussion. Comparison between two methods. Due to the high degree of the quality, the nature of the ice sample that was caught in PEP is different. So in order to make the DIC data from two methods compare <coughs> DIC values were norm normalized to reference the linearity. And uh, this, is, this data is all come from the first experiment. And, and the one is conventional method, the two is modified method. And <coughs> we can see the simple one. Layer salinity is different, so they are not in, they are not comparable. But after they normalize the data, they, in, uh, they convert DIC to NDIC, it made them comparable. And, uh, and they also calculate the delta NDIC between 1 and 2. And the data is 2.7. And the same as they do on other samples. And get the Delta and DIC data. And observing the data, two methods of processing the sample did not cause a large difference. Therefore, we can speculate that there is no loss of DIC during the process of venting the air. And this is the second experiment. And there are two figures to uh, to, 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 result, uh, to explain the result. And look at the figure. The axis is day. The y is the concentration of DIC. And it is points of ice sample. And we can find that the DIC has no absence change during the 21 days. And next, it is on points of ice sample. And after in the figure, we can find DIC did not change <coughs> significantly in the first three days. But after the third days, the concentration of DIC gradually <coughs> increased. DOC is the third data we measured, and we can find that a, the, with, the set, with, with the same sample, we can find two, uh, from day 0 to day 21, the concentration of DOC <coughs> increased. And why? And what? But the reason caused it. Due to the releasing from the plastic vacuum bag, whose metery uh, is made of organic carbon. And look at the table, look at take one figure and table. The table is the poison 
and on horizon eye sample on day zero in a time series experiment. And we can find that the DIC, the concentration of DIC doesn't increase with time. So we also can say there will be no exchange of carbon dioxide through the back <coughs> in the multiply method. And the effect of biological activity on DIC and NASI. <coughs> Some research add the H2CO2 to inhibit biological activity. However, the results show that for the unpoisoned sample, DIC can stay unchanged before, uh, at least three days. And the effect of gaseous carbon dioxide. Under extreme conditions, it can be known from calculation that the DIC difference will be small. So we can also say the effect of gaseous <coughs> carbon dioxide on DIC will be smaller than smaller in common condition. And the effect of IK dissolution on DIC analysis. It is possible to quantify the contribution of IK to IK8 IK to DIC analysis by measuring the difference in DIC or TA. And the concentration of IK in the ice core was lower than the measurement uncertain. And conclusion. We can know no loss of DIC during the process of venting the air between conventional method or and then the modified method. And it's not necessary to pre poison unless high biological activity. And for the new bags used in the modified method, there has no carbon dioxide parental ladies. And the effect of gas carbon dioxide biological activity and IK solution on DIC is also small. And at the last, this modified method will make it possible for high density sampling and measurement of CI DIC under even the most extreme field condition, and which will improve our understanding of the, of the exchange of carbon dioxide across the ocean, sea ice, and atmosphere intake. Thanks for your attention.
priming of the <coughs> seawater. Then why don't we call it seawater? Of the priming. Water, water, water. <laughs> so it's usually saltier than salt. Sylvia, can you explain method one again? Method one. Method one. Is 
is uh, the data is uh, tightly linked. Oh, you have so many slides. Sorry, where is it? Maybe here. Uh, the data is tightly linked to his conclusion. Like for example, here. Although I don't like the table here, but uh, here you have this uh, data, and then based on the data you print directly, what's the main conclusion you have from this uh, data? And lastly, that's something for you to consider is, his conclusion is a real conclusion. Let me repeat again, what is conclusion? Conclusion is not something like a, a big pie, like, oh, we want to do this study because we want to know global warming. This is not conclusion. This is, this is uh, motivation. So you can see that his conclusion is his finding, main finding. That is conclusion. Okay. So, and then he used a small uh, mugshot to remind you which data uh, links to this data. Okay. These are really good. Okay. Witness. Um, you need a purpose slide. I didn't see a purpose slide. What's the purpose of this study? I didn't see it. Okay. And uh, you, as I said, you need more image for your method. And you have some uh, pronunciation problem like a heterogeneity or obvious. Okay. And lastly, and the, the, main, the, the thing that I dislike most is your table. So practice making table yourself. And when you introduce your bigger, you should introduce the axis first, okay? But otherwise, it's a very nice talk, and he spoke fluently and clearly. So uh, let's thank Tony.